Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here and it's Wednesday the 15th of February. Thanks again for watching and thanks for supporting the site as usual. We had thousands of people come to the site yesterday. So thank you again for that. It was one of our busiest days. In fact, it was just about the busiest day um, that we've seen since the site started yesterday. And that's because you're spreading the word about what's going on here. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, you can support the site as well because the adverts that you see around the screen here um, generate revenue for us and that's what keeps things free of charge at the moment. So um, if you see an advert you like, click on it, go through to the advertiser, it generates revenue for us and it shows the advertiser that you're interested in what we're doing too. So thank you so much for that. Anyway, on with the forecast and I wanted to start off today again with the um, 7 to 10 day mean 500 millibar chart so this runs from next Wednesday through to Saturday the 25th and it compares two different models on the left here we've got the uh, ECMWF and on the right here we've got the GFS now the redder color shows where the heights are higher than normal which means warmer air than normal the blue colors where we're lower than normal so colder air than normal and the black lines here join lines of equal heights now they basically work very similar to surface isobars in that the closer together the lines is where the strongest winds are and that's at 500 millibars about 18,000 feet is where the jet stream is so we can compare these two charts and see where the jet stream is forecast to be between next wednesday and saturday or the mean position of the jet stream and you can see that the uh, ecmwf actually has the jet quite strong across the atlantic here and brings it through central island through central parts of the british isles high pressure to the south low pressure to the north you see that contrast between the higher heights the warmer air to the south the colder heights the lower heights to the north and that's why you get this compression between the two it's that contrast the strong gradient between the warm air south and the cold air north compare that with the gfs for the same period and look yes it has the jet stream but it has a much deeper trough look here over the uh, eastern states and um, what it does is it brings that jet it has it further north of the british isles between iceland and Scotland and it builds this ridge across southern parts of the country through Europe so this whole area of high heights look is further north than it is on the ECMWF that means that the GFS is going for drier conditions than the ECMWF because with the uh, jet stream over the top of us you'd expect Scotland, Northern England, Ireland, perhaps northern parts of Wales, the Northern Midlands to be fairly wet in this scenario but the south is still dry but um, the GFS has got things completely the other way, well not completely the other way around, has got things uh, much drier across most of the country with the rain up to the north and it's really deciding okay which one do we go for in between these two. Now that's the uh, way that the North Atlantic Oscillation looks over the coming two weeks. You see it's in positive territory, that's stronger westerly winds flowing across the Atlantic. So that's the tendency for this to blow in low pressure and fronts off the Atlantic. It then dips to near a neutral uh, from, the, uh, from the 24th onwards, so that's next Thursday or Friday. And we're watching this. This looks reasonable that that westerly flow could weaken, but of course the ECMWF doesn't see that. The ECMWF, as I've just showed you, is keeping things as more of a westerly. The Arctic Oscillation, which measures really about how easy it is for cold air to get off the pole, is generally in positive territory, so it's keeping that colder air further northwards now. But look, it dips negative as those weaker westerly winds set in across the Atlantic. So trying to hint at the possibility of colder air trying to get further south in this GFS run. Um, although obviously you've got to bear in mind the fact that the ECMWF kept it drier. And that's how uh, rainfall is seen from the GFS model in the next seven and a half days. So this runs from midnight last night, so from the 15th through to the 22nd. And the red colour showing us, look, dry conditions across much of the UK, but near normal conditions across western Scotland, northwest England and through Ireland. Now, I actually think that we're going to see something in between these two, where these near and normal conditions will be across Ireland and across northern parts of England and Scotland, with the south yes in dry conditions at sort of 30 or 40 percent of normal rainfall that's the way i think things are going to be uh, are going to be panning out but how do the next few days look well this is from the uh, is the gfs ensemble model i'll take you through the next few days the time is up here in the top right hand corner look we've got the isobar shown here in black we've got the rainfall shown here in green and we knocked them on in 12 hour steps that's this evening look with a northwesterly flow through the country uh, this is generally dry conditions all brought about by high pressure off towards the southwest into um into tomorrow so into thursday watch this front coming into northern and western scotland during the course of thursday that bringing some outbreaks of rain 
up towards the north and the west of Scotland. I think by the end of the day it's through Ireland, it's through northwest England too, but look, very little across the northeast of England. Down to the south we're drier, we've got some sunny spells still to come, but I think fairly cloudy conditions. The winds westerlies at about uh, 13 or 14 miles an hour for most in the afternoon. And I know at the moment wind speed's critical for farmers, you're trying to get quite a bit of spraying done. So um, I'll try and watch these as we go through the forecast for you. Then as we go into Friday, well, the ridge tries to get back in again. I think we are going to see a front lying through northern England and southern Ireland bringing some outbreaks of rain. But to the south, I think here we're going to be dry. Wind southwest is about 14 or 15 miles an hour. Later on in the day, though, we are going to find more persistent rain coming into northern and western parts of Scotland and western Ireland as these fronts move in. Look, it becomes quite wet in the afternoon and the winds up there southwest is 25 to 30 miles an hour, increasing as that front moves in. Into Saturday morning, the front will spread its way eastwards. Watch what happens into the afternoon. There it goes, look, clearing southeast in England. This introduces much cooler air. So this is colder conditions coming down through the country. And as that rain clears the south, we could find that it turns to sleet and snow on its back edge. Some snow showers following into northern and western Scotland too. And windy with the winds becoming west-northwesterly, then northwesterly at 20 to 25 miles an hour for most. Perhaps gusting 40 miles an hour just about anywhere as the front passes through during the afternoon and um, I just want to bring home to you really uh, what sort of a dip in temperature we're going to be seeing here because um, you can actually see that on the temperature forecasts here look um, there's that dip look in temperature as it comes through these are the 14 day forecasts and then you see it rises upwards uh, as we go into the early part of next week so this dip in temperature certainly not the severity that we saw uh, last week and the weekend before um, but nonetheless it's it's going to be notable it is going to feel cooler and then on to Sunday, well the northwest wind is setting proper, uh, northwesterly is through Sunday, sorry just go back there, northwesterly winds probably blowing about 18 to 20 miles an hour for most of us. I think some snow showers for northern and western Scotland, some running down the Irish Sea too and just affecting northern coasts of Wales, perhaps northwest in England, but elsewhere we dry and cool. The wind's easing off in the afternoon. Overnight into Monday, quite a sharp frost. Could be minus threes, minus fours, perhaps the odd minus five here and there through Monday morning. But I think through Monday itself, it looks to be a bright day. I think sunny spells coming through. The wind's going into the westerly, westerly direction and probably between seven and eight miles an hour in the south, nearer 12 to 13 miles an hour across northern parts of Scotland. And then into Tuesday, well things starting to hint at becoming more unsettled look through Tuesday. The wind's picking up certainly, a breezy down Tuesday, southwest is at 18 miles an hour to 20 miles an hour. Outbreaks of rain spreading in from the west, most of them affecting western coasts of Scotland, England, Wales and Ireland. Some fairly heavy bursts of rain could affect western slopes. I think to the east though, eastern Scotland, I think east Anglia, probably the Midlands, south east England, here we're dry but breezy. Um, a bit of a question mark for North East England. Could be some outbreaks of rain there, I think, during the course of Monday evening. And then into Tuesday, well, still the southwesterly flow is with us. So I think still southwesterly is probably blowing at about 20 miles an hour. I think drizzle on these western coasts again. But look, you can see many central and eastern areas are drier across England and Wales. High pressure still doing its job. And then into Wednesday, well, a more of a westerly flow through Wednesday. Western coasts again seeing outbreaks of rain. And, sorry, let's just knock that back again. You see this band of rain here, watch. It moves eastwards, it's a weakening front. It spreads eastwards but clears away from the east coast in the evening. Winds generally westerlies by there at about 15 miles an hour. And then as we're heading towards the last part of the week, well, Thursday starts to see pressure build. But, look, the isobars coming in from a west northwesterly direction. Colder air getting into Scotland, I think. Not desperately cold, just cooler conditions. Bringing some rain probably onto northern and western coasts in the form of showers, perhaps turning to sleet on the hills. Could be a few wintry showers across northwest England too. Down to the south, we're drier but cooler. And it looks as if those cool conditions really do last as we get into the uh, back end of next week. So that's how things are shaping up um, during the next week or so. Certainly one to be watching out for is uh, the fall off in temperature I think this weekend but then as I say it picks up before it takes a dive during the last part of next week. So hopefully that's been useful for you. Thanks again for watching. Uh, don't forget to click on the advert if you see one you like. That's what generates revenue for the site and uh, keep the sun shining. Thanks for now.